Newstalk 1230 WFEA Time 819 this morning on this Wednesday. We are talking about uh, traffic and safety and roads. Uh, we're Roger Wentz with the American Traffic Safety Services Association. They are ba based in Stafford. He's our guest this morning on the program. Roger, we're talking during the break just about the increased use of guardrails and, and just and now the kind of a new thing with this, this cabling that, right. that, that helps uh, help stop cars and trucks from from veering over where they shouldn't be right uh, traditional guardrail you, you'll see uh, on generally on the right hand side of the road keeps you from running off the road into a wooded area going over an edge if you're in a mountainous mountainous area they've been using a lot more what they call cable barrier three strands typically in the median and the, the tragic thing about the, about median crossover fatalities is that it usually involves somebody who is an innocent driver coming the other way. As somebody may lose the uh, control of their car in the left lane, for example, cross over the median and hit somebody who, who is just, you know, out driving and obeying all the laws, etc. That cable barrier is designed to actually catch the vehicle and has been proven to be as much as 95% effective in, in reducing crossover uh, crashes. That much? Yeah, and that's pretty good. Uh, some states have had reported that they've had 47, 48, 50 uh, crossover fatalities in a single year and had that reduced to none or one after installing uh, median cable barrier. I guess one of the important things is to have good striping and good directions, when, especially when you're, you're dealing with, with areas, especially in tourist times, like right now in summer season, you've got people who are on roads who may not know when lanes are going to end and you got to merge and all that kind of thing. Oh, you bet. And the, one of the things that, uh, that, that uh, makes the roads look the same is there are standards for using signage and striping, etc., and the advances in making the signs uh, brighter, more visible, uh, making the striping stand out is it, there have been great advances over the past 20 years and the key there is you have to think of the person who's coming from outside the area not necessarily the everyday user who goes uh, the same road every day on the way to work but uh, like in the Fredericksburg area we have people that are coming from outside of Virginia we need to give them direction so they know how to get from point A to point B safely and I, I know in, in this area along Route 3 there's a, a Route 3 East you go from three lanes to two, and you don't have a lot of time when that right. merge takes place, and it, it causes a problem even with people from around here. Yeah, that's true, and one of the things that has happened is that the, uh, the m m mere growth in traffic that we've had, number of cars on the roadway, uh, exceeds the design capacity for many of the roads that we have in the area, and it's just tough to build new, add new lane miles. You know, so you've got uh, sometimes two or three times the, the number of cars that the, the, the roadway may have been designed for. You know, you mentioned a few minutes ago about the uh, about striping and things like that. You, you don't think of that until you come into a place where some new pavement's been put down and they haven't striped yet, and it's a lot of times chaos. Right, because the, the people sort of have the general idea that there should be a lane here. They remember a lane here, but it's not delineated by markings. And... Uh, it uh, does cause it does cause chaos. Sure looks good when you get those stripes down on a new roadway. It does. Roger Wentz with the American Traffic Safety Services Association, based in Stafford, with us this morning on Fredericksburg today. I know VDOT makes a big effort to try to get people to remember about going through work zones. Is that word getting out, or are people slowing down, or not really? Uh, well. Sometimes they are, and you mentioned VDOT, and we really should commend uh, VDOT that they started here in Virginia something that has sort of morphed into National Work Zone Awareness Week, where we have an annual event uh, here in the Washington area, and now 48 states, I think, last year held some sort of uh, uh, event to try and remind the public to slow down in work zones, to obey the signs, not to try and rush down the closure lane to get as far as you possibly can before you have to pull over. Uh, a thousand people approximately die in work zones every year and about 75 or 80 percent of them are motorists, not the workers themselves. So you're really helping yourself when you obey the signs in a work zone. I know a few years ago VDOT did a thing where they had reporters go out and stand in work zones and it was terrifying. Oh, it is. If you've ever been in a work zone and the traffic goes by at 70 or 75 miles an hour, uh, it is incredible the, the, the feeling that you have. I don't know how those, workers, uh, how those workers do it every day out there. 
the uh, the association has a has a foundation. Talk about what that's what's involved with that. Sure, uh, we do have a foundation, and, and the uh, foundation raises uh, raises money to do several things. One is we have a scholarship fund for the children of workers killed in work zones. Uh, we make that available uh, nationwide. Whether or not you're an ATSA member, if you're a, uh, a police officer, a workman, whatever, that if you pass away in a work zone, then uh, your children are eligible for a scholarship. And we all also do uh, a program where we try to bring training to children uh, in elementary schools. So we have a, uh, a project where they can draw a work zone and then that ends up as being part of a calendar, the winners of that, of that particular uh, contest. Sort of along the lines of when, uh, when I was younger, they trained you to wear your seatbelt in, in elementary school. You know? So you went and you told your parents, don't start the car until you have the seatbelt on. Yeah. And we hope that, that people will say, Mommy or Daddy, drive slowly because we're in a work zone. If, if someone wants to get in touch with you or in, in the organization, what's the best way to do that? Give us a call. We're uh, right here in Fredericksburg, but if you have some listeners outside the area, go ahead and use our 800 number. It's 800-272-8772, and we'd be glad to talk to anybody, any of your listeners, about uh, traffic safety. I, I guess traffic safety is something that even in tough economic times, you can't cut corners or decide let's not do something for a year or two. It's just too important. Uh, that's absolutely true, and the, the thing is that uh, we, we really have something that borders on a, on a national health problem. There are more uh, people that die, kids from 5 to 18 years old, in car accidents than in any other single cause in the country. So we want to keep that in mind always so that we can bring our kids up safely and have them travel on the road safely. And I guess that's just something that... You, 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 it takes everybody, whether it's whether it's what the, the lessons and the, the teaching, but also you want you want good roads. Absolutely, you want a good, safe roadway. You want one with good signage, good markings on it, so people know where they're supposed to drive. And you want to teach the kids to drive safely, uh, safely as well. You know, there are a lot of efforts to get the high school kids, to young people, teach them to drive safely. Don't drink and drive. Don't speed. You know, etc. All of those efforts combined are necessary to make our roadway safer. Anything on the horizon, anything real, any kind of cool gadget or anything high-tech on the roads that you can think of? Well, there's a lot of discussion about what they call vehicle uh, interface with the roadway so that the car becomes a little smarter and detects when you, say, go out of, out of your lane. Now, in order for the car to detect when you're going out of your lane, you need good markings so that it can make that type of detection. But I think if you're looking toward 10 or 20 years ago, we won't be quite the Jetsons flying around, but we will have cars that will help make, the, make our trip safer. Okay. Roger Wentz with the American Traffic Safety Services Association based in Stafford. Roger, thanks so much. We'll stay in touch. Okay. Love to be here again sometime. It's 826 on News Talk 1230 WFVA.